Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to ask the Premier about the real state of health care here in Nova Scotia. We hear daily from people waiting to be attached to primary care in their communities. One unattached rural Nova Scotian without transportation used to get a year of a per life-saving prescription from a walk-in, but now, with Maple, he can only get 90 days. Mm. He bikes 40 kilometres to get that medication. Maple, I'll remind the Premier and the Speaker, is a private company that is now being paid public fees for each service on top of its multi-million dollar untendered contract. I guess this is better than not getting medication at all, but will the Premier tell us when the 144,000 Nova Scotians on the Need a Family Practice wait list are going to be attached to a real live human health care practitioner in a collaborative care clinic in their community? I recognize the Honourable Premier. Madam Speaker, very, very proud of the work that the, the Health Authority and the Minister and the Department have done to make sure that Nova Scotians have different options <clears throat> to access care. Of course, the member has mentioned virtual care. That is an access point that's helping many Nova Scotians, hundreds of Nova Scotians every day, saving them travel time, saving them wait time. And, and Madam Speaker, the member uh, should be aware uh, that when a virtual care appointment happens and it's determined that the patient needs to somebody see somebody, they can get into they can get into one of our one of our primary care clinics and they can do it very quickly in a matter of days. And I think that happens 20% of the time that the virtual care person says, "I really want you to see somebody," and they get them into a clinic within a, within a couple of days. Virtual care is part of the future of healthcare, and it will be here to stay. It's an important part of the future of healthcare. I recognize the honourable leader of the New Democratic Party. Madam Speaker, I want to note that every time I have asked a question about when the people on the Need a Family Practice waitlist will have attachment to a primary care provider that we have not gotten an answer. So we're going to tick this off as one more time. It is now commonplace to hear people waiting hours in the city for an ambulance. Whether it's kids lying on the football field in the middle of Halifax in the cold with an injury waiting for an ambulance to arrive, or the family in Chesapeake who was told when they called 911 that they're was no ambulance available when their son had a life-threatening injury. Mm -hmm. A paramedic said about that case, this is happening literally daily. Someone has died or they weren't able to be treated on time. And I will table that. I'd like to remind the Premier that there is no amount of innovation that will replace Question. a trained paramedic or nurse in a medical emergency. When is the Premier going to make sure that when people call 911, an ambulance shows up? The Honourable Premier. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Nobody wants to hear those types of stories, certainly not our government, certainly not those health care professionals that are, that are responding and doing, doing incredible work uh, to support patients of this province. But since we're in the, in, the, in the mood to remind members of things, I will remind that member of the Patient Access to Care Act, which was a nation-leading piece, uh, piece of legislation that passed through this House that talks about common sense credentialing. Help us get doctors here. Help us get nurses here, paramedics and healthcare professionals. And that member, they voted against the Patient Access to Care Act, Madam Speaker. That's a good piece of legislation that will help get us the healthcare professionals here we need. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party on her final supplement. I will remind the Premier, Madam Speaker, that we on this side of the House support democracy and that act, like many of the Premier's acts, concentrated the ability to decide whether someone could practice here in the hands of one minister. Shame. One minister, and that is inappropriate. And we echoed every single health regulator in the province in coming to that decision and asking them to take it back and make it a better bill. But whatever the innovations for health care that the Premier loves to announce, let's hope that they work better than the virtual care pilot in Ontario, which we heard today actually did nothing to alleviate the stress on emergency rooms and was mostly used by people who already had a physician. It didn't work, and I'll table that. The Premier is poised to give Maple Question. up to $20 million for uncertain returns and no impact on attaching patients to Question. permanent primary care. When is the Premier going to do what it takes to actually fix the health care system? 
I recognize the Honourable Premier. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And when we met as Premiers uh, this week, we talked about innovations that are that are happening across the country. Sometimes innovations, when you're first out of the gate, you got to pivot a little bit and get it get it just right. But that shouldn't stop the attempts at progress. So our our virtual care uh, pilot that we program we have here is different than the one in Ontario. But what what I would say what I would say to the to the member with your editorial about democracy is maybe the member wants to speak to the nurses college who have gotten on board and are processing 18,000 applications. Maybe the member maybe the, maybe the member wants to speak to the college of physicians who are getting on board and recognizing certain schools. So, so when it comes to when it comes to licensing and accrediting healthcare professionals, all listen to those people, not the leader of the NDP. Yeah.